Welcome back to Wet Coast Workshop. Today I'm working on cutting the concession window and tackling the rest of the bodywork so we can get a fresh coat of paint on the trailer. This actually went a lot smoother than I expected. Using a combination of a grinder to get things started, and a sawzall with a Milwaukee laser blade, it made super quick work of cutting out the rough opening. After some grinding to smooth out the edges, I tack welded in some structural supports and welded the trailer skin to the frame. This was a long, and I mean long, process. And since I wanted to make this a seamless weld, to avoid warping things, I made small one to two inch welds moving around the frame and allowing things to cool down before warping occurred. Once it was fully welded, I moved on to removing the front door from the trailer, which, surprise surprise, involved even more grinding. Now I can give the front door the same treatment as the concession window and get the skin fully welded. Now to take care of some huge dents in the roof, I've made a rounded wooden dowel to act as a dolly, and with the help of the engineer's hammer, I'll make quick and messy work of these dents. To highlight all of the high spots, I'm using a sanding block, then I can come back with my body hammer to knock back any of the large high spots. And now to start one of my least favorite jobs of the entire build, sanding the paint. I decided to start by sanding a small area and applying the first coat of body filler to see how I was able to cover the worst of the dents. A little percussive persuasion to knock down a high spot where I welded in the window patch and then I'll clean everything with wax and grease remover and we're ready to start with body filler. Because I'm applying over some large welded surfaces, and I have some reasonably deep dents still, I'm putting down a layer of fiberglass reinforced resin, sometimes referred to as kitty hair. Since this stuff is so brutal to sand, I'll start by knocking down any major high spots with a body file, once the resin is set up but not fully hardened. Then I'll follow up with an orbital sander and some 80 grit sandpaper. Moving on to the front, I'll do the same process and get a chance to clean up some of the dents that I worked on in the last video. Now, by this point, I was definitely sick of sanding, but I didn't realize how much worse it was about to get. Now 
And I'll interrupt the boring sanding montage to make a custom tool for sanding the fenders. I just carved down the block of wood so that it was able to fit behind the fender while also sanding the interface. Then I glued on some foam to provide some compliance. Taking a quick break from sanding, I'll start with the first top coat of Bondo, then back to more sanding. I managed to intersperse long bouts of sanding with a bit of body filler work and I'm coming back now with the finished coat, using a lighter polyester resin to improve the finish. Some areas required a third or fourth coat of resin, but eventually I got it all ready and started to blend the areas out to get a smooth finish. I've now got to weld on the bullet style hinges, which I admit I kind of rushed and should have made a jig to hold them all at the same angle, so this one's going to haunt me later in the build. I can now move on to some glazing putty to address any little imperfections in the Bondo surface before I start prepping for primer. For prep, I'm wiping down the entire surface with wax and grease remover twice to make sure that any surface contaminants are gone before I spray. For the exterior, I'm using a marine primer and paint system that should provide a durable but easily serviceable finish. The primer I'm using is called Interprime 198 and it's part of the international paint system. Now again, this stuff is very forgiving of poor technique because it's self-leveling, so I'm really not too worried about long, even strokes with the gun. All right, so the trailer's primed and we're gonna be painting it with a top coat of Interlac 665 uh, Gloss White. Now they don't make a flat white, otherwise I would've got that. But most important thing is make sure you shake it up really well. So I picked this up from the store a few days ago, so I'm gonna give it a good shake and then a stir and then we'll be ready to spray. Now, one thing that uh, I learned with the primer is that it's virtually impossible to clean up with anything other than mineral spirits. So. Lacquer thinner doesn't work, paint thinner doesn't work, uh, soap and water doesn't work. The only thing that does anything is mineral spirits. And that's good to know if you're gonna use any of these um, Interprime or Interlac, uh, the international paint systems, uh, because they don't tell you what to use for cleanup. They specify using their specific cleaners that are very hard to get. So I wasn't able to get any of the product that they recommend for cleanup. So I had to go through and test everything until I found something that worked, and that was Mineral Spirits. Now I've got a few spots on the trailer that are pretty hard to get at with the airless sprayer. So we're gonna hit those with a brush first just to make sure that we get some good coverage. And then uh, once we get those filled, we'll hit it with the airless sprayer. And finally, I can begin the first coat of paint. I'll follow this up with two more coats and some touch-ups where the bugs decided to make a home. <laughs> 